five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. This is about space. America's return to space with news and information on our U.S. space program is your host of About Space, David Denault. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. In just days, Boeing will attempt to launch Crew-1 on a manned orbital test flight to the International Space Station for an eight-day mission, bringing the ISS crew to nine members. During a pre-mission news conference, Steve Fitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew, said, Everyone is excited about having two shuttle to the ISS. Uh, we're all very excited uh, to bring the Starliner capability online to have uh, another crew transportation system uh, for one of only two certified transportation systems and human-rated systems for the space station. So it's an exciting time for us, and I know the crew is very excited about that as well. Uh, we are taking our time and being very diligent as we work through the final preparation of the flight hardware, the flight software, the crew training, and closing out all of the certification products that we need to human rate the Starliner for flight. And so when we look at the CFT mission, just from the station manifest perspective, the, the window for CFT is, is kind of the middle of April to the end of April, and that's kind of what we're looking at. And we'll work, Mark will talk a little bit more about uh, the other work on the vehicle and how we will make the decision to target the final launch date. Um, you know, I've had a chance to talk to the crew. The crew is very excited, Butch and Sonny, about flying uh, this mission. Uh, they'll go down uh, to the C-3PF next week and begin to look at some of the cargo for the vehicle and how the cargo gets stowed and begin to prepare uh, as part of the normal preparation uh, for launch. And they are in the middle of many simulations. Uh, there was a mission dress rehearsal uh, for launch not too long ago, and then another one from the undock to landing that it transpired. Coming up, Jeff Ahrens, ISF's chief, and Mark Matthews, CS100 Starliner, next, as America and the world is listening to About Space Today. Come to the land of orange groves and palm trees. Come to the land of theme parks. Come to the land of sunny beaches and the azure waters of the Atlantic Ocean. So come and visit Florida for lasting memories. Email us. Email david.ddcruiseandtours at gmail.com or call DD Cruise and Tours at 877 747 8631 for your next family, cruise, or theme park vacation. Let us provide you your next visit with our travel experience, not experimentation. We are members of IATAN and CLIA. Email david.ddcruiseandtours at gmail.com. Serving the Southeast, traveler since 1985. Welcome back. The man responsible for coordinating the traffic coming and going to the ISS is Jeff Ahrens. Uh, from an ISS point of view, uh, we're super excited um, to see Butch and Sonny uh, show up uh, on, Starline, on Starliner for, for their eight-day mission. Um, both Sonny and, and uh, Butch bring a wealth of experience in their careers and will complement the crew on board station brilliant, brilliantly. Uh, during their time on station, they will be busy, be busy conducting science, technology, uh, demonstrations, outreach, and, and commercial activities. Um, and it's kind of a, just a big deal for us because we go from seven crew to nine crew, and it's just uh, just having more hands on, on, on board uh, really helps us complete, complete our mission. In terms of criticality, this mission is super important from a certification, certification process for Starliner for rotational flights to and from the International Space Station. So we're really looking forward to it. And for Boeing, it's all on the line in a critical test of Starliner. Mark Matthews of Boeing says they are still targeting April. So we're still planning. Uh, we're still ma we've maintained that plan, I should say, and we're still targeting that mid-April to late-April time frame. So I think that's a real credit to the NASA and the Boeing team that you know, we got together, we put together a pretty good plan, and we're still executing to it. But it's, it's important to remember that this is like Steve said, the final stage. You know, we've, we've done our designs, we've 
we've tested this hardware, uh, the analysis is all all done. So now this is the kind of let's wrap it all up in a bow and make sure that we we did what we said we were going to do and we have all the artifacts to prove it. And that's what we're going through at this time. So Steve and I are watching this real closely and we'll track our, our readiness as we go forward. Uh, we're also incorporating a dual port capability so that we can dock on the International Space, Space Station at both docking ports. And that's going to, that's uh, on plan and that's a, a, a big change uh, from CFT. Uh, it's going to require or is requiring some flight software, GNC, and some mission ops changes, and we've got a good plan, and, and we're marching down that schedule to be ready for PCM. Coming up in 30 seconds, meet Sonny Williams, who logged 322 days in space on two missions and performed seven spacewalks and orbited the Earth 5,162 times. Next, as America and the world is listening to About Space Today. Mardi Gras is home. We've all waited for a long time for this day, and so we are thrilled and excited to welcome Mardi Gras finally to her home here in Port Canaveral. We've invested billions of dollars to reduce our environmental impact, and so we're very excited at Carnival Cruise Line that this ship, Mardi Gras, is the first ship in North America to bring this technology. Book your fun cruise on Carnival's Mardi Gras today. Call D&D Cruise and Tours at 877-747-8631. That's 877-747-8631 and come see the Caribbean. Welcome back. Sunny Williams is a space veteran, but did she always want to be an astronaut? And the quick answer is no. It was a little bit of happenstance and a little bit of surprise, uh, a dream come true, if you want to uh, say that. Um, I sort of fell into this profession. Uh, of course, um, when I was growing up, my, uh, my dad's a doctor, my mom is a do everything type of person and uh, so they instilled in me and my brother and sister the, the spirit of you you know you can do anything you want to do and you know sort of stumbled upon the Naval Academy which was a, a great opportunity I had no idea what I was getting into but it was sort of at the recommendation of my older brother who went there and um, and ended up uh, finding that uh, you know I loved flying helicopters as a result of that and uh, and, I, and I pursued understanding how they actually worked and then it became a test pilot and that sort of led me down the path to uh, looking into becoming an astronaut. So it wasn't until much later in life that I, I actually found that path and uh, sort of got my way here. Um, but I got into aviation and uh, started flying helicopters. And that, um, then I went to test pilot school. Test pilot school brought us down here to Johnson Space Center where I met some astronauts, John Young in particular, who actually landed on the moon and talked about landing, uh, flying some type of helicopter um, vehicle to practice. And I was like, wow, I have that skill. So, <laughs> so maybe uh, I could come here and uh, use my skills. Maybe we'll go back to the moon. Maybe we'll do something crazy like that in space. So, so here I am. Wow, it's, a, I, it's hard to explain because uh, particularly on my first flight, I thought to myself, wow, um, and uh, on my first launch, we actually had a, uh, we didn't launch the first attempt um, because of bad weather. And so it really, it sort of built on that same feeling like, oh, this isn't ever really going to happen. And on the second launch attempt, when we actually went, um, it was, it was exhilaration. Everybody on the mid deck where I was on the space shuttle uh, was all excited too. All three of us were first time flyers. We were uh, like it was on a roller coaster, just screaming and yelling, like, Woo, let's go, we're going to space, oh my God. And so um, it was really, really exciting. And I think the jitters for me, the excitement part happens as soon as the, main, the first thing lights. Because, you know, if you can imagine, you're, you're sitting at the top on both of these spacecraft for the most part, and the engines are at the bottom. So anything that starts down here, it's a huge moment arm, and you can feel it up at the top. And so you start to know. And so I think for me, that's when the jitters start. But shortly thereafter, you, you know, you, 
you're punching off the planet <laughs> and you're on your way and then you're sort of you know in your in the in the state in the in into what you're supposed to be doing and what was it like to rocket into space so liftoff is incredible um you know, you're sitting there, and I'll, I'll talk about to the space shuttle because the space shuttle is a little bit more um, um, bouncy ride. So it's a little bit give, gave a little bit bigger impression, and it was the first time I went to space. Five minutes beforehand, we start the APUs, which are the auxiliary power units. Those are smaller engines that are just moving the hydraulic uh, control system to move the flight controls. And um, the vehicle actually does move its flight controls, which are pretty far down from where we are. Again, that moment arm, and you can start to feel the vehicle move a little bit. When, even when the, just the flight controls move, not even the engines turn on, but just the flight controls move. You're like, oh, that's interesting. And six seconds before launch, the main engines start, um, and they're all at uh, one and a half uh, million pounds of thrust, and they're offset from the uh, together one and a half million pounds of thrust. They're offset from the center of mass, the center of gravity of the vehicle, so it actually makes the vehicle move a little bit. And you can feel them start the rumbling. You can feel the vehicle twang, which means it moves over a little bit. And then on liftoff, the SRBs, the solid rocket boosters light, and you're propelled right off the planet. And you can feel this acceleration, and it's just loud and vibratory, and it's, you're just moving. Um, and then the vehicle starts to accelerate, accelerate, accelerate as it's uh, going up and up through um, thinner, get, as the atmosphere is getting thinner. And you can feel the G-forces start to push on you. And it's, it's the G-force that pushes you right here. It makes it a little bit difficult to breathe for maybe about 15 to 30 seconds or so. But you know you've talked about this with other people who have flown before. They told you about it, so you, you know not to be panicked. Just hang on there, and then you'll be able to breathe. And then uh, the SRBs, a minute and a half, come off the vehicle, and you hear this explosion, and the, and the ride gets smooth, but the acceleration continues. The whole time just laughing and just going, oh my god, I'm actually in space. It only took seven and a half, eight minutes to get here, and it was very loud, there was a lot of fire, it was very rumbly, but now I'm here. Captain, U.S. Navy retired, and NASA astronaut, Sonny Williams. I'll be joining Don Meyer this Friday on America in Space to have you meet Barry Butch Wilmore, Captain U.S. Navy and NASA astronaut, who will join Sonny Williams on the eight-day mission to the International Space Station. Check out our Facebook page, About Space Dot Today, for launches and landings, and invite your family and friends to listen weekly. And to all our listeners around the globe and here in the U.S., thanks for joining me. I'm David Denault, and this has been About Space Today.